Hello friends, in this video tutorial we will be talking about the developmental biology of C. elegans. So we have already talked about the developmental biology of C. urchin as well as uh, the developmental biology of Drosophila. Uh, we use different model organism like Drosophila or C. urchin to study the specific region of development or specific section of the development. Uh, see, Drosophila is an eukaryotic organism. Every one of them are eukaryotic organism. In Drosophila, uh, the body segmentation or the process of gastrulation uh, find very interactive and very very attractive and that's why we study Drosophila. In case of sea urchin, uh, we mainly study sea urchin for, uh, for the understanding of uh, fertilization process. In C. elegans, however, we use C. elegans for the better understanding of the neural development, the neural development. You know, uh, first of all, what is C. elegans? I know, I hope everyone knows what is C. elegans. C. elegans is a true uh, metazoan uh, parasite because it's a metazoan uh, animal actually. C. elegans is nothing but a round worm. It's a type of round worm. We call them nematode. Nematode. Okay the round worm of nematode that is found in soil and they feed on bacteria as well as amoeba okay so the reason we use C. elegans uh, there are multiple reasons we use it because the life cycle is very small the complete life cycle of C. elegans is only three days long then they are transparent uh, their body is transparent so we can see through them uh, how the eggs are deposited and how the fertilization take place and how all the process of development it's very easy to understand there as well as uh, the C. elegans are um, easy to grow because they feed on bacteria so we have bacterial culture in plates uh, petri dishes and we have bacterial lawn and we place uh, these worms there and you can feed on bacteria easily can be grown biohazard is very less because we're dealing with these organisms and these organisms are fairly long to visualize in a simple microscope view okay so in a sense uh, this is a very easy i mean easy to understand uh, organism and a lot of lot of research is going on using c elegans nowadays uh, in developmental biology as well as in the molecular biology uh, the level of gene expression study is very very important there so if you look at the anatomy of c elegans you will see that uh, this is a beautiful uh, electron microscopy image and this is another schematic presentation so see the body is very fairly straightforward uh, it start from this is a this this complete uh, the green and then the purple this whole thing is making the digestive system that is a uh, elementary canal uh, for uh, for this uh, worm here because it begins with the mouth and pharynx this is the intestine that that goes long enough just like the uh, any other worm and if you see here uh, rest of that if you look at another uh, side because the most important thing uh, for our perspective of study is the uh, development system that is the fertilization system here In the system you see this is the rest reproductive system see this is the distal gonad that is present further and then we have the uterus lining here because see this is the uterus lining and there all the eggs start to form this is the region C eggs and oocytes start to form there. This is a proximal gonad which is which, which we see gonads are divided into two parts here proximal and distal. Distal is a distantly apart and proximal uh, is very fairly close enough. At the end of it we have the anus region here. Okay. So see it's a fairly straightforward body and uh, this is how it looks like and it is transparent usually so we can see through it and all the process that is going on inside. This is an overview of the life cycle of uh, C. elegans. Uh, see, this is a C. elegans, uh, the adult C. elegans, capable of lying egg. That uh, lies the egg. After lying the egg, in the first cleavage occurs in 40 minutes. And the, the idea about the developmental biology for all, all the organism is that it will lie the egg. I mean, the gametes will be produced from the adults, egg as well as sperm. Then they will fuse, fertilization take place, zygote will form. Once the zygote will be formed, then after that the zygote will transfer, I mean it will undergo rapid cell division to produce morula, then, then cells will be arranged uh, to produce blastula, then blastula will have certain folds between the cells to develop into gastrulation 
and the different organizer concept where all those distant determined cell will ultimately lead to the generation of the predetermined organ and that's how the organism is generated. In case of uh, this uh, C ligand, C after the process of cell division where the blastula is formed, uh, the idea for uh, that cell, the sequential events are a little bit different in case of C elegans compared with the C urchin or frog or chicken or all these cases because uh, the structure uh, for this uh, worm is fairly straightforward and very simple. They don't require that much of complications because see, in body they don't have any fragmentation. It's a round body, it's very round body, uh, both uh, the end. Uh, the only thing they need to produce as a body axis determination is the mouth and anus. These are the two sections. So anterior and posterior. This is the only body axis determination which is uh, required and rest of the thing is fairly simple. So the cell division uh, or cleavage that start to occur in C. elegans are not equal. That means the cell will divide, will not produce equal uh, shape and structure of the cell. They will produce unequal cytoplasmic distribution. If you see this image, you will be clear that the cells, some of the cell contain larger cytoplasm maximum, some of them contain small part of the cytoplasm. So it approximately 30 cells are produced and then they'll start forming the gastrulation. And the gastrulation phase of C. archin is also quite different because in this case it will undergo three rounds of folding. The cells will fold upon one another three rounds of such folding and during this process remember the, during this blastula phase where the cell division take place there are certain cytoplasmic determinants that are present certain proteins that are present in some of the cells which will tell the cell to be either endoderm or mesoderm because the ectoderm will be the outer layer cells which are predestined or predesigned but the only thing determines uh, the rest of the body organ is the system called EMS system of uh, C archin, uh, sorry, C elegans, because EMS means uh, endoderm and mesodermal region. EMS is a segment of cells that are combined together along with another cell called P2. Uh, th those cells are present in the blastula phase actually, and uh, then all, you know among all those cells, there are chemical signaling going on, and uh, the cytoplasmic determinants in form of certain proteins are acting. Now, if certain proteins activated, it will ultimately turn a cell into either E or other cells into MS. From the MS cell, it will produce the mesodermal tissue. From the E cell, it will produce the endodermal tissue. And P2 will be differentiated during that part. So once that thing is determined, then the gastrulation takes place. And gastrulation means simply proper folding, three layers of folding. First folding is a small fold, see here, it is called the coma. Then second called the one fifth fold, right? Actually, four layers of folding. So, first folding coma, then one fifth, uh, one point five fold, fold not one fifth, one point five fold, or uh, one and a half fold. Then two fold, see one and a half fold, then two fold, double fold, and then finally third fold occurred from the top. And it, this this fold ultimately completes uh, the structure of this round worm, because see if you have a have a pack of cells, if you fold it four times it will ultimately lead to the generation of this structure see in this picture see you can you can properly see the structure of this worm something like this see after this fourth fold it's very basic and once this folding is done it produces uh, the structure which is called l1 form All right l1 form from the l1 form after 12 hours of the development uh, so it's called crowding and starvation at high temperature uh, this L1 form is a very versatile form because normally if it eats a lot of food at this particular time at L1 stage of the larva it will start eating a lot of food and it will start eating food see the digest I mean the development system that is the reproductive system slowly start to grow up and up it becomes larger and larger the gonads start to form and all these things because at the very beginning of L1 stage it only contains the digestive system and little part of uh, little part of the uterus there. See, normally C. archin contains two different uh, genders. One is called the hermaphrodite uh, and second one is called the male. Uh, they don't have female in that sense. Hermaphrodite can synthesize both. Hermaphrodite can produce oocytes, it can produce egg as well as it can produce sperm. It can switch uh, between the male and female character. Otherwise, other, uh, other than that, we have a complete different male which is shorter 
than the hermaphrodite type and the body is less complicated but see normally uh, so once they start eating after 12 hours l1 becomes l2 then after 8 hours l2 becomes l3 uh, then after 8 hours again l3 becomes l4 and slowly as uh, l1 to l2 l3 transition start to occur the development system that is the reproductive system slowly start to build up and it, it, it becomes much more complicated over the time and finally after 10 hours of the L4 it will transit uh, 10 and 8 hours it will ultimately turn into the young adult see at the L1 stage the length is 250 micrometer only but after uh, the completion of all this process the adult usually length about 900 to 950 micrometer so see a lot of I mean four times approximately the yeah, from the L1 stage to adult stage it, it uh, becomes larger four times uh, okay maximized now during this why I told that L1 stage is a very important stage because see during this L1 stage there is another situation possible if they receive some kind of starvation or high temperature or any harsh environment which is difficult to live then that L1 larva can turn itself into a specific structure called Dowier. This Dowier structure. This Dowier structure usually contains in you know, a 400 micrometer long and they remain in this Dowier structure for a long period of time. At this stage, they don't have mouth and anus because they close all their opening at this particular time because they don't want to eat, they don't want to defecate, nothing. Just they'll stay as, as it is. And they can stay at this form up to four months and then they can directly come out as the L4, L4 form of the larva. It can bypass two stages like L2 and L3 directly. So it's a situation just like the spore formation in bacteria we know. If harsh condition arises they form spores and store and stay there for a long time. Just like that they can turn them in, into this dire stage here. So see <clears throat> Uh, if we talk about the hermaphrodite, uh, say hermaphrodites, in hermaphrodites I have told them uh, that they have uh, the chance of, to produce egg as well as sperm. Usually the first 40 germ cells that are produced that enters in the meiosis phase in each arm of the gonad, they develop into approximately 150 sperm and they are deposited in the specific organ uh, region called spermathica that is present in the hermaphrodite body in the gonad right in proximal as well as in distal gonad that 150 approximate sperm once they produce that 150 approximate sperm see this is the posterior spermathica this is anterior spermathica these are the regions where oocytes are present this is where all the regions like eggs are present you know as the oocytes start to develop they push this oocyte towards this region where the eggs are developed where is a small opening called vulva through where the eggs will come out see this is the region completes with uterus so see uh, the first 150 uh, of those cells will ultimately turn into sperm cells once they made that sperm cell then the sexual fate is switched it is switched to the other cell and rest of the germ cells are then converted to oocyte and they remain in the oocyte form and they remain oocyte here this is the region where oocytes are stored see let's draw all the structures in the bottom area like that it is a uh, uh, it is the development part or the reproductive system here and as the oocytes are placed they will slowly start to develop and become mature to ultimately turn into eggs this is how the fertilization takes place here see this is a hermaphrodite condition which acts as a female in this case see this is the sign of hermaphrodite male and female combined uh, so here let's say it provides the egg and this is the male only see males are much smaller they can interact sperm can be injected there and the process can take now as i've told you the major differentiation for the c elegans have to make is uh, only one thing uh, for the body axis that is anterior posterior body axis determination which part will be anterior or mouth which part will be posterior or anus and that thing determination uh, is done by again certain cytoplasmic determinants uh, they are called par proteins see par <clears throat> different types of par proteins are involved there par 3 6 they work together par 1 and 2 work together so here what happens in normally this is the larva this is the condition the the zygote there uh, this is the egg actually not the zygote zygote, zygote is not formed yet so this is the egg where you see this is anterior and this part will be the posterior so lot of par 1 
protein slowly start to accumulate in the posterior section and part 3 and 6 are scattered in the cytosol okay in the anterior now after the fertilization is done then it shifts the course in that case after fertilization par 1 then uh, spread it in the cytosol properly and then part 3 and 6 are involved and placed in the membrane containing region or membrane touching region in the anterior side okay now this is a switch that is going on between par 1 and par 3 and 6 par 1 it's dissociated from uh, from the cell cellular region to the cytosol par 3 and 6 from the cytosol to the cell membrane now during this process uh, this is a change in distribution, right? And this change in distribution, what is it? This change in distribution of these PAR proteins are made by the microtubule organizing center that is coming from the sperm. Because sperm donates uh, that microtubule organizing or MTOC. From the MTOC, they start to develop lots of microtubules which will drive these PAR proteins to the proper region to ultimately define the fate of that region of the body axis. Because you know, wherever in that egg wherever in the zygote par 1 is deposited that part will be turning into posterior wherever part 3 and 6 are deposited it will turn into anterior right and that thing will be derived and uh, all those all of those uh, par proteins they they are dragged right they're dragged towards uh, the specific region of the cell using uh, this the, using this this microtubules that are coming from the MTOC donated by the sperm right so see here this is the cell right zygote after the donation of sperm centromere uh, centrosome as well as uh, the sperm pronucleus so both of them are placed here like like say in wild type and then what happens this mic microtubule organizing center slowly start to arrange all those microtubules see and what it does actually it slowly start to drag all the pre p granules p granules this p granules play a vital role and see during the development at the very beginning red means part 6 they are arranged here in the anterior side right and then blue means part 2 they are placed in the posterior side right from the beginning as well as the the cytoskeleton slowly start to arrange and see this microtubule organizing center slowly start to arrange those microtubules which will drag all those pre p granules towards the posterior side so ultimately the fate uh, or the body axis of anterior and posterior is determined by two things one is the arrangement of par 6 and par 1 to proteins because par 1 will be in posterior and par 6 and 3 will be in the anterior along with the p granules determines the fate of the posterior section so wherever the p granule concentration will rise it will ultimately turn into the posterior region and that's what exactly take place here so this is the only thing they required about the body axis determination nothing else is required but on the other hand if you see the embryonic development phases after the fertilization event that is the cleavage or farrowing process you will see this is the this is the fusion of two two nucleuses and it becomes a 2n nucleus of zygote then they start dividing and you see that the cytoplasm uh, distribution between the cells are not equal so they are called unequal cleavage so see one larger cell one smaller cell and then they are doing the same thing over and over again to ultimately produce a some bunch of cells there and this is the stage this is the blastula stage this is the blastula stage see why it's a blastula because see in this blastula stage the blastocele that is formed is very very small blastocele is a region which contains a hollow region that is the blank region between the cells cells surround that region it, it is a fluid filled cavity that is present everywhere right every mm, uh, development of organism and this is the region blastocele is very small in this case cells covered a lot of area and this is the blastula phase where you see uh, at the beginning of that phase we have an EMS which contains all the three different cells now after that during the blastula phase and mid blastula transition that EMS differentiated into two different types cells one uh, one is e, e cell types another one is MS E means E cell will ultimately convert into endoderm MS means mesodermal cells right 
And once the blastula phase is reached, it's done. Then the folding start to occur, that is in gastrulation phase. Folding means the folding will start from different regions. And see four layers of folding. First folding is called coma. Coma, the first, first folding. After that, we have second folding, that is 1.5, then 2, then 3. And then after this, this four layer of folding, it ultimately make this body. See, first folding from here, second folding, third folding from this top four. Uh, 1.5 and third and it ultimately convert it into the adult uh, it's not a, the adult but l1 larva for the c elegans and the most important part about this uh, daughters uh, during the blastulation phase is the segregation of e and ms from the ems and this process of segregation of e and ms cells uh, from because see in this case they are not producing a lot of cells very few cells are there in blastula phases and among those cells ems is a structure of cell from the ems cell e cell and ms cells are segregated and from these cells rest of the body part will be originated and we also have different p cells with containing p granules because this is the posterior region and we have p4 we have p2 and p3 different cells here see from the ms cells if they produce the mesoderm which ultimately convert into muscle and pharynx for the e cells they produce the gut the rest of the gut part that is the endodermal section see at the this is called a blastomere identity if you look at in a blastomere blastomere means cells that are present in blastula phase are called blastomere and uh, the blastocele is a fluid filled cavity that is formed okay so see in this blastomere phase we start with the p0 cell P0 cell will be divided into two types of cells, AB cells and P1 cell. Now this AB cell and P1 cell will further divide, AB cell will divide into AB, P1, AB, A1 and all this stuff. And then AMS and E and P1 will divide again into other cells. right? So, but ultimately the most important part is that the division of AB and EMS because these are the two regions. So from this AB, you see, we begin from here. This is the second stage, the third stage and fourth stage. So if you look at here from the second to third stage, this AB can divide into two parts, ABA and ABP. That ABA and ABP, this is a one important section. Another important part originates is EMS. From the EMS, one will be E, another will be MS. E will produce gut, MS, mesoderm, produce muscle and pharynx. Where AAB, ABA and ABP, whatever part they are having that, progeny that will make pharynx and epidermis uh, due to the induction from MS because see the process called induction during the development that is a specific region of tissue or specific tissue or cell during the development can influence the nearby cells to and to is receive a different fate or receive the same type of fate as MS receiving the fate to make muscle and pharynx due to the close proximity of ABA present to uh, very close to the MS it will already this MS will influence this AB to produce pharynx and epidermis. That's what happens. And this is the um, body planning that which part produces which region. Like say uh, AB regions, neural, muscle, structural development. EMS also uh, from the MS section also muscle, neural, gland, somatic, gonad uh, and all this. E part produce gut right and the p2 there is p2 and p3 region because see p1 actually differentiated into ems so if you see at the very beginning this is the very beauty of this development first there is only one cell p0 then p0 divides into two cells ab and p1 now ab now if i take this barrier here ab is differentiated uh, normally as an ab and abp and ab aba whatever but this but this P1 divides into two different part, E, M, S and P2. Now if we take the same thing again, AB remains as AB. But here, that EMS distinguished and divide into E and MS, right? And P2 divides into, let me take, P2 divided into C and P3. Then final division AB remains as AB, C lot 
lot of things to draw here e m s c and then p3 will divide it into d and p4 d p4 so see finally this is the segmentation of body it begins with one cell only that is p0 p0 divided into ab and p1 then ab remains as ab ab divides also like differentiate like ab a ab p whatever but it remains like that but p1 divided into ems and p2 now ems is one of the most important section because then ems divided into e and ms and p2 divided into c and p3 then e and ms remains and they develop different regions c remains as it is but p3 will finally divide again into d and p4 so this is the body division planning for c elegans that you should remember okay so see different regions produce different parts like like say p2 section whether it is made with c and d and p4 whatever they produce muscle neuronal regions germ lines most of the cases the p4 the ultimate region it produces the germ line and rest of the part like d and c they produces muscle ms uh, mesoderm also produces muscle neuronal region glands and all this thing e produces gut and ab produces again ab is completely influenced by ms because ms pre presented the close proximity to ab and they produce the muscle and pharynx see <clears throat> the mesodermal region is autonomously specified that is it is specified without any uh, presence of any proteins or specific proteins like that because uh, there are lots of experiment is being done if you see the pharynx the presence of pharynx there so from this from this gonad i mean from this uh, developmental embryo we can if we take the cells out it's very easy to take cells out because handling uh, this part because lots of less cells are present less complicated so we can take cells out if we take the ab part removed you see if we take the ab part removed frank uh, you see the pharynx is developed if we take the p1 part killed pharynx if we take uh, remove the p2 also pharynx because pharynx is developed uh, i mean mesodermal region that is a pharynx and muscle it's controlled by so many different regions if you even take one of these regions out it does not uh, make a very much difference out there okay okay where we are we talked about it okay so now let's say there are some uh, facts about the proteins they interacted with each other and that's what we, i want to say here is that uh, i told you that the region for mesoderm production that is c e m s distributed into e and m s or divided into e and m s now the division and production of this mesodermal layer this mesoderm fate is determined by the cytoplasmic determinants example is skn1 it's called skin excess gene and this protein skn1 it is responsible for the mesodermal fate so see in wild type there are a lot of skn1 and the skn1 protein concentration raised in a particular region of the embryo and it converts it into the mesodermal layer produces the all uh, pharynx and uh, other tissues uh, pharynx and uh, muscles but see in a sk1 mutant where if we delete the sk1 gene uh, in that case uh, it fails to develop the proper pharynx and gut okay that is one one region over there ems display both autonomous as well as conditional specification so autonomous specification means the speci it is already specified predetermined fate but conditional specification means the specification or the production of a particular organ or, or, or tissue system will be developed if only a specific protein is present for example cytoplasmic determinants specify the ms fate like skn1 activates the transcription of med1 and med2 genes right this is the cytoplasmic determinant skn and it determines the fate of ms where the cell cell inductions determines the fate of e right from the ems combined cell uh, the nearby cell interacting and influencing ultimately turn and produce this e right but if there is presence of this skn1 proteins then only the cell turn into ms right that's how 
the cellular fate is determined. <coughs> EMS requires P2 to make the cut. So during the developmental phase, if EMS is not interacting with P2 properly, then the gut will not develop. Because see, from the E it will produce the gut. But if there is no P2, it will not produce the gut. So at the very beginning, see, EMS and P2 is not interacting, so no gut formation. Again, not interacting, no gut formation. Where EMS and P2 interact with each other, then only gut and pharynx are formed. Okay. And the P2 specifies the gut through a gene and protein content called MOM2. Remember, the formation of gut, I have told you, the formation of gut from E cell is due to the cell cell induction. Where the formation of gut from P2 cell, because remember P2 cell also influence gut formation. It requires a cytoplasmic determinants. Now, it sounds confusing, but the thing is, if you study it properly, the process of development of gut or muscle or pharynx or whatever organ development, either it is denoted by the cytoplasmic determinant or it is denoted by the cell cell interaction. For example, the production of gut from E, e cell is due to the cell cell interaction, while the development of gut from P2 is the process of cytoplasmic determinant and cytoplasmic determinant means some proteins like the protein here is MOM2. Okay. So see MOM2, if we have EMS with the P2, right, it will develop. Without the EMS and MOM2, it will not produce the gut properly, right? So the gut production is important with the help of the MOM2 there. So you, if EMS is interacting with the MOM2 and then with P2, it specifies the gut formation. See, and from the EMS, that this distribution, this distribution requires MOM2 and WNT signaling. WNT signaling pathway we already studied in my channel. If you want to study WNT pathway in details, you can see. So again, another example where the signaling of MOM2 and WNT pathway ultimately leads to the differentiation of MS and E from the EMS. Now during the end of blastula, what we know is that cells that are produced here in the C elegans you see the cells, it surround and it will develop a small region inside fluid filled cavity, what we call as a blastocele. blastocele. But the blastocele here, you see it is very, very small because the rest of the cellular region or which are called as blastomere, the cells of the blastula phase. The blastomere is pretty large here, blastocele is very small. Okay, so that is how it is formed there. Okay. And then the final stage of gastrulation where the division and folding, see a lot of cells start to bulge out and start to fold. And remember it has four different fold, first fold, then second 1.5 fold, then second fold, then third fold. It rises to the L1 larva. So see there are different cellular components, A, B, M, S, C, E, D, P4, they start to go and divide and finally they are ready, those cells are arranged properly. Then folding will go on and then they will turn into the embryo, the larva, L1 larva. Okay. So the body layers formation here is not like the other kind of folding. The folding is four folding only, it turn into the individual, the L1 larva. Then it will go on and L2, L3, L4 and finally the adult uh, C elegans will be developed. Okay. So this is. Uh, the overall uh, developmental biology of C. elegans. Remember in C. elegans the property for the development either depends on two things. One is the body axis determination, only one thing, anterior posterior axis determination using PAR proteins, PAR 3 and 6 to the anterior, PAR 1 and 2 to the posterior and the pre-granules to the posterior. While uh, the blastocele development and the blastula phase, uh, it relies on the interaction between the EMS, P2, and all these cells and this interaction and this determination of different organs and different tissue is based on two things. One is the 
cell cell interaction just like the formation of gut from e uh, e cell and the second thing is the cytoplasmic determinants like the formation of gut from the p2s uh, p2 cell and that is uh, the cytoplasmic determinants can be proteins like mom2 wnt uh, they are the signaling molecules and the final stage of gastrulation relies on uh, the bulging out of cells see cells arranging like this and then proper folding folding throughout the place see because see the ab regions in the gastrulation the ab slowly start to cover up the whole area see the ab covered the whole area then c slowly start to divide and segregate into two different part d also segregate in two different part m is also segregate in two different part ab remains there e remains there and there is a p4 region in the middle this is the arrangement in gastrulation once this arrangement is done then there will be fold four different folds and the l1 larva will be generated so that's it uh, that's the overview about the developmental biology and c elegans and i hope that's helpful if you like the video please subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that uh, like my video share this video with your friends thank you